When I first took these out of the box, it was pretty dark in the room. And just to show you the level of my color blindness, I thought these shoes were black. But look at this. Look when it gets up close to the light. These are a gorgeous dark blue. In fact, they are Mood Indigo Night Sky Lunar Rock. And of course, the shoe is Solomon's newly released Phantasm. And it is built as an up-tempo-ish trainer. However, I think this shoe covers a lot of ground. And as I usually do, I've taken this shoe out for a lot of different runs. I have run easy, I've run tempo, I've run intervals. And this shoe, surprisingly, is a great all-rounder. But first, let's talk about price. In the US, the Solomon Phantasm rings in at $160. In the UK, it is £150. And the price is absolutely right in line with very similar shoes on the market. I think $160 or £150 for the Phantasm is a fantastic price point, mainly because it's so versatile. I've said it about a few other shoes, but this is going to be one of the shoes that you could take and use for pretty much every run that you do. It is nice and light. A US men's size 8 weighs in at 235 grams or 8.28 ounces, but in my size, a US men's 12 and a half, it tips the scale at 288 grams or 10.2 ounces. And guys, that's pretty light for a shoe of my size. Now, if you have been following me for a while and you hear me talking about my shoe sizes, you know that I usually wear a US men's size 13. Solomon is notorious for running just a little long and when I dropped half a size down, the shoe fit my foot perfectly. Now, this would be the point where I usually tell you about how much weight the shoe put on after I went out for a run. And hold on, we're gonna get to that in just a second. According to Solomon, the Phantasm has a nine millimeter drop. We have 30 millimeters in the heel, 21 millimeters in the forefoot. However, it does look a little more than that. And I think that drop is being recorded without the insole, but still 30 millimeters is a stack height in the heel is nice and comfortable and it's a pretty cush ride. Okay, let's start at the top. Let's work our way down. First of all, let's look at this heel collar. We can see here it is very thin and this is one of those heel collars that really doesn't come into contact with your ankle because around the sides and coming around the back, you can see we have a little bolster and that just kind of grips the back of your heel and holds it in place. The heel counter is fairly squishy. I mean, you can see that I can push it down like that, but it isn't as squishy as some other race shoes where there is absolutely no structure to it. It actually feels pretty good. And when my foot is seated in the heel cup, it is very secure. I didn't experience any heel slip. Solomon is using their Matrix upper. It's a single layer, very breathable, non-absorbing mesh with Aramid fibers. And yes, I said it's a non-absorbing mesh. So right out of the box, I put these shoes on. I went out, I ran 13.3 miles, which is about just over 21 kilometers. And it was very hot. It's very hot here in Florida in the summertime. And when I got back from that run, I put these shoes on the scale. And to my surprise, it only weighed 10.4 ounces or 292 grams. So my friends, this shoe put on four grams in water weight after my run. That is absolutely unheard of. That is nothing. So if you are looking for a shoe that doesn't hold on to water weight, either from your sweat or running through puddles or running in the rain, the Solomon Phantasm is definitely a shoe to keep your eye on. Now this Matrix upper is it isn't the most pleasant upper to touch with your fingers. It feels very rough, but that point is moot because you're gonna have a pair of socks on when you put your foot into the shoe. And when my foot was in the shoe, I didn't feel the upper at all. And the fit was actually very secure. I had plenty of room in my toe box, which in years past wearing Solomon shoes, that has been an issue, but I had plenty of room for my toes to move around and I didn't have any discomfort. I haven't had any hot spots in all the runs that I've done in this shoe. Now I've already given you the weight of the shoe, but the weight of the shoe is actually quite surprising because of all the overlays. We do have like a rubberized coating along the eyelet chain to just give it a little more strength. We also have some rubberized material starting at the heel and coming along the side of the upper right above the midsole to just give that upper a little more support. This overlay then comes all the way around the front and wraps around the other side. And then if you look right on the front, you can see these couple of different shades of indigo blue. And it looks as if Solomon has included almost like a plastic coating right around the toes. And it looks like this is to make the shoe just a little more resilient. Remember, it is a single layer mesh. So with a single layer mesh, we save weight, but sometimes we lose a bit of resiliency. Not so with the Phantasm. The front of the toe box has been reinforced, so it's going to stand up to any punishment if you're the type of person whose toe kind of pokes the top of your shoe. But other than this rubberized area right on the front of the shoe, the Phantasm is remarkably breathable. And that breathability, along with the low weight, makes the shoe disappear on your foot. And we really can't ask for any more than that. Inside the shoe, on the medial and the lateral sides, we have Solomon's Sensi Fit, and the Sensi Fit system has just little bands that go from the top of the midsole up to the eyelet chain to again provide a little more structure to that midfoot. So when you cinch down the laces, it gives you a good midfoot lockdown. Gotta say, it worked like a charm. Once my shoes were tied and in place, they didn't move around at all. The tongue on the Solomon Phantasm is a very thin race style tongue. And when I say thin, I mean it is really thin. Now, a lot of the times shoes will have a little bit of padding right on the top of the tongue to stop the laces from biting into the top of your foot. The tongue on the Phantasm just has a little bit of rubberized material on the top of the tongue with doesn't really feel like any padding. 
running. I got a great midfoot lockdown and I didn't experience any laces biting the top of my foot. But when I first saw the tongue, I thought maybe some of you may experience that just because the tongue is so thin. Now the tongue is non-gusseted, but it works. Usually I will say I would take a gusseted tongue any day of the week. But on the Phantasm, the tongue is actually sewn to the medial side of the upper. It's sewn right below the eyelid chain. And then on the lateral side, the tongue is free to move around. And this actually works surprisingly well. Didn't have any issues with my tongue being out of place on the Phantasm. Now, although this upper isn't the softest, it's not the stretchiest, I didn't really have any problems putting my foot into the shoe. And because the tongue is sewn to the medial side of the upper, that sewn area made the tongue stay in place. So I didn't have to adjust my tongue after my foot was in the shoe. It was nice. It's a nice option for a shoe with a tongue that isn't gusseted. The laces on the Phantasm are extremely thin. They're of a linguine shape. And in my opinion, they feel a little slippy. Like they slide right through my hands. And I found that when I tied my shoes, it felt like the knots on the shoes were not going to stay in place. However, with that said, I always double knot my shoes. My laces never came undone once. So take that for what it's worth. Maybe they just feel a little slippy, but they actually work pretty well. They lock down my foot very well. I've said it before and I'll say it again. That is the one job the laces have to do. And in this case, it works. So all in all, the upper is a remarkably better fit than I would have thought it would be by just feeling it and manipulating it. It was an absolute treat to put my foot into this shoe and start running. The shoe felt just like part of my body. That probably has something to do with the midsole too. Now on the Phantasm, Solomon is using two types of midsole. They're using their Energy Surge on top, which is a lightweight, very responsive EVA OBC blend foam. And on the bottom, we have Solomon's Energy Cell Foam, which is a firmer blend, which gives the shoe stability. And you can see where the foam's separate. And right in the middle, we have Solomon's Energy Blade. On this shoe, it's very easy to see because it's yellow. Now Solomon's Energy Blade is a TPU and fiberglass plate. It's a two thirds length plate, so you can see how far it actually comes down. And it's a three prong plate. It's kind of like this on the shoe. And that plate, along with a combination of the midsole foams and Solomon's Arc Hamber midsole geometry, create a very pleasing ride. Now Solomon's marketing speak will say that their Arc Hamber geometry makes you feel like you're floating across the ground. I'm not sure if I'd go that far, but I do have to say that from the very first step I took in this shoe, it felt very smooth. Very smooth and very soft. And when I say smooth, I'm talking about the transition from heel to toe. On some shoes, they are really going to feel very sluggish when you're running at slow speeds. Perhaps when you're hitting your heel and then rolling through the gate cycle, some shoes just don't feel good. The Phantasm was nicely surprising because me as a heel striker, especially when I run slow, I start all my runs running very easy. Definitely striking on the heel. And as I roll through my gait cycle, there was nothing that was noticeable about rolling through the fulcrum and then being pushed forward. In fact, in this case, I think the two thirds plate design is pretty ideal. And also we can see on the back of the shoe, we have a lot more energy surge foam than we do the energy cell foam on the bottom. So I found that when I strike my heel, I get a nice soft landing, which is exactly what I want when I'm heel striking. Then as I roll through my gate cycle, I'm picking up this plate and it gives a lovely feeling of kind of moving me in the right direction. Now, of course, like all shoes with a plate, they tend to come alive a little more when you start picking up the pace, a little faster than your easy pace. And my absolute favorite run in this shoe was a tempo run. Just running at a comfortably uncomfortable pace, this shoe was absolutely beautiful to run in. Intervals were exactly the same. When I'm in between intervals and I'm trying to let my heart rate come down by running a lot slower, it was nice to have such a comfortable area on the back where I start heel striking again. And then when it's time to pick up the pace, the shoe just wants to go fast. Moving now to the outsole, Solomon is using their Contagrip outsole. And as you can see, we have a beautiful big layer of rubber on the outside that's going to keep this shoe from wearing down too quickly. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but we do have two pieces of rubber right on the back. Obviously, for most of us that strike our heels first, especially when we're running slow, this back lateral side is where we are going to hit. So for me, it's very nice having this piece of rubber back here. Now, I do see a little bit of wear back there already, and I am seeing a little bit of wear right up front. But honestly, I think that is to be expected for how many miles I have put in this shoe. And because it isn't a daily trainer, it is not marketed as a daily trainer, even though for me, it has kind of come across that way. And actually, I think I'm going to be reaching for this shoe a lot more than just my fast efforts because of how comfortable it is at slower paces. So I've got to say, I think Solomon is really onto something with the Phantasm. This shoe is going to appeal to a lot of people. Okay, my friends, thanks for staying all the way to the end of this video. Oh, by the way, Solomon was kind enough to send me this shoe for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to review it and no one is going to get a chance to see this review before you do on YouTube. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.